In Creo Simulate, you can use a pin constraint to control the translation and rotation of cylindrical surfaces about an axis. A pin constraint in simulation should not be confused with a pin connection in a mechanism. A pin connection allows one rotational degree of freedom for your different components. But again, with a pin constraint, that's about controlling both the translation and rotation of cylindrical surfaces. Let's take a look at the command. I will click on the pin constraint. This opens up the dialog box. You can change the name of the constraint. You can also change the color that it is displayed in. It can be a member of a set. You can also create a new set. But the important thing is that we are going to select our geometrical references for this constraint. And I will select a couple of cylindrical surfaces from two different parts in this assembly. And then we have the properties. And here is where you can control the rotation about the axis and when you, whether you can control the translation or the axial constraint for the pin connection. Right now, both are set to free. And if I click the OK button, we can see the constraint uh, created in the model. Let me move this more towards the center and let me select the constraint so that you can see it. And you get the little symbol in the graphics area and this indicates what is restrained in the model. And I find that in the background, this ends up creating a cylindrical coordinate system for those different surfaces. And in this situation, it is constraining the radial displacement. So when you leave the rotational and axial displacement free, it is still going to constrain the radial displacement. With the constraint still selected, oh, I, right now I have the set uh, selected. Let me go to this constraint itself and edit definition. Let's change our control for the angular constraint. And instead of free, let's make it fixed by clicking that button. I will click the OK button. And you can see how the symbol updates in the graphics area. So now we have both the R coordinate constraint as well as the theta coordinate constraint. And with the constraint still selected, I will hold down the right mouse button. Let's go and edit definition. And let's constrain the translation or the axial constraint for the pin connection. I'll click the OK button. And now you can see from the little symbol that we have R, theta, and Z translation along the center axis of this constraint restrained. And once more, let me right mouse button and edit definition and show the one combination that I haven't shown. Let's have the rotation be free. And this is a lot like a regular pin connection in that we have the one rotational degree of freedom. I will click the OK button. You can see that, oops, I deselected. Uh, you can see that from the little symbol, we have the R and the Z constraints of the cylindrical coordinate system restraint. So that's how you can set up the constraint. Once again, let me edit the definition of this. And although a moment ago I mentioned a pin connection, again, these are very different from your pin connections in a mechanism. So please don't confuse the two. Again, it is about constraining the radial displacement all the time for those cylindrical surfaces but you can control whether you have axial displacement or rotational displacement for those surfaces as well. And one last thing to note, if we do have the radial constraint, excuse me, the angular constraint and the axial constraint fixed and click the OK button, this is enough to run an analysis. If you were to have either of the two different constraints, the let me edit definition. You had either the angular or the axial constraints free. Well, you would need to have some other constraint in your model in order to run the analysis. If this is all that you had in your model, you would have unrestrained degrees of freedom and there is a good chance that your analysis would not run depending on how the rest of the analysis was set up.